Hello everybody and welcome back. I am the Popkin King and in today's episode we're going to be continuing our build of pure imagination and today we're going to be continuing in the horror node. Pure horror. In a previous episode we got started building all of the different buildings and I said that I was going to be building more stuff on screen so that's what I am doing right now. What we're working on right now is I'm working on building a replica of Disney's Haunted Mansion from Disneyland, not Disney World. The Disneyland Haunted Mansion is actually built in the Italianate style, while the one in Disney World is the Roman Revival, Romanesque Revival style. So I'm just kind of going off of a reference that I have on my other screen and then just going through and building these as quickly as possible. Just as a point of reference, what you're seeing right now only takes about two minutes to see on the screen, but it's sped up 4,000%. Um, it's 40 times faster than it is IRL to actually build it. It took me several hours. So one of the things that I have to say that I really don't like about Planet Coaster is the roof system. The roofs that they have in Planet Coaster drive me up the wall, you guys, seriously. Like, you may notice that there's a uh, little corner section that doesn't actually match up in terms of the shingles or in terms of the height with the rest of the building. And that drives my OCD absolutely crazy. But the problem is that the set of the roof tiles that I was using, the, um, I want to say they're the haunted roof tiles, this is either the haunted or the spooky, don't match and they don't have the corner pieces that I need, so I had to use the Victorian ones and then recolor them in order to try and get it to at least the same color. From a distance, you can't tell, but I know it's there and it's going to always bug me. So I really hope Frontier overhauls the uh, roofing system. Uh, right at the moment, I'm just kind of going around copying the layers over. One thing that I've noticed a lot about recreating actual buildings is that there's very seldom, like, actually just solid straight walls. Uh, there's always little insets, there's always little side panels and stuff, especially with these old vintage buildings. And replicating that can be somewhat problematic when you're uh, doing the wall system, but I think I got it pretty well down here. What you're seeing now is I'm just trying to figure out how to make a hexagon. Uh, I'd watched the tutorials online and I'd messed around with it for oh, about an hour and a half and I finally figured out how to do it. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to make more complex shapes this way, but it works well enough. And then I was able to get the spire up on top of the house, the little uh, widow's walk cupola. This is actually a pretty common feature of Italianate style homes, uh, which is what inspired the Haunted Mansion in Disneyland which is actually based on a real-life house in, I want to say, Louisiana. Uh, just going in and adding in the rails now, final touches, get everything moved into position, and finishing up with the trim, and going around the outside of the roof. Like I said, the roofing system drives me absolutely batty. Um, even just the simple trimming around the outside was something that took a really long time. And then I'm making some custom bushes by combining the square topiary bush with some of the rougher bushes and just kind of overlapping them here. So I get that less manicured kind of look for the garden here. Moving on from that, we then started in on our first dark ride. I was very excited about this and I was explaining to my wife that I had an idea for a Phantom of the Opera ride. So what I did to start off was I pulled up a whole bunch of reference images of the Paris Opera House, which, if you don't know, is an 1830s, very Baroque-style building. It is an absolutely gorgeous piece of architecture, but man alive, it is a pain in the ass to try to recreate in Planet Coaster, because there's so many pieces, so many little fiddly bits. Again, this is sped up about 6,400%. So this build took me several days to complete. 
mostly because I had to go through and build all the little fiddly details. Um, so here I'm just putting in the facade of the building and I'm saving it as its own blueprint. And I realized quite quickly because of how many pieces there are to this build, it has to be built modularly because otherwise it's going to be too big to be able to move all at once and cause a whole bunch of computer problems because of all the pieces that are being used. So I saved it in three separate blueprints and then you can import those buildings one at a time and build it modularly. I still have some work to do on this project and I want to do the outside, uh, but I am somewhat limited in that it's really hard to actually find 360 views of a lot of these historical buildings. So if you happen to know like a site or a resource that gives like a 3D model of these historic buildings so that I can see what the back or what the side looks like, that would be awesome. You can link that to me and I would be happy to review it because with the reference images I get, I get a lot of the facade and a lot of the front view, but I'm not seeing a whole lot in the way of like the side or the back views for this. One thing that Phantom of the Opera is absolutely classic for is its massive over candling. And there's candles everywhere throughout the course of this build. I have over 250 candles set up just for this ride. And the kicker and the thing that kind of bugs me is that even though I have so many candles, it actually doesn't even provide that much light. Like the light provided by candles in this game is so low that it takes thousands of them in order to get an area to be properly illuminated. So here I'm joining up the actual ride area and the ride itself. And I had an idea for this ride that I wanted people to enter into the opera house as part of a queue to work their way down into the cellar and then the ride would take you down into the sub cellar part of the opera house. So down here, if you've seen the movie, this is where I'm attempting to recreate the little chapel where Christine Daae goes to uh, pray to the angel of her father at the beginning of the movie. Um, and I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out overall. Uh, I was able to make the closed-in space by submerging the entire build underground, but we'll see that in just a moment. Um, going in, I added several rafters and beams to try and convert these roof elements and make it look like it's a load-bearing support. Um, switched it over tonight, and here's where I'm practicing the sinking of the actual ride. Um, I haven't built a dark ride before. As a matter of fact, I haven't built any ride before, so this was a bit of an experiment for me as to, you know, how it works with being submerged, how dark rides work, and lighting aspects, and so on. So I'm just going through, um, and I'm playing around with the building, and I wanted to make sure that the ride would be capable of not getting stuck anywhere uh, and be properly illuminated. And I think I pulled that off. So here, I've gone into the world and I'm just laying out where I want the building to be and then I'm sinking it down. What's ingenious about this building and about this ride and something that I want to incorporate in other rides in the future is because it's mostly underground, I can have attractions and stuff up over the top of it and it won't interfere, it doesn't cut into the space. So it takes up a very small footprint on the surface, but that means that it actually has a really big footprint underground. So I'm totally okay with that, and I'm definitely looking to try and do that more. Here, I'm developing the internal aspects and assets of the ride. Um, again, if you've seen the movie, you know that Christine goes through a, a false mirror down into the Phantom's lair. So here I'm just building Christine's um, dressing room. One thing that I wish that I had, and Frontier, if you're watching, please add this to your list. I want curtains that aren't horror movie curtains that don't flap around in the wind. Just regular static curtains would be awesome. Thank you. So I, again, got myself some reference images for Victorian rooms, um, for... Uh, you know, the internal parts of the actual 
Paris Opera House, and I tried as much as possible to match the feel and the ambience of those. Though, because I had multiple different sources, I just kind of combined them together into my own individual opera house. And here, I'm trying to figure out the arm-holding candelabras uh, from the movie. This is ultimately how I ended up doing it. I'm not super happy with it, because it has like this weird geometric shape and the chonky arm, but unfortunately, until we get scaling, which again, Frontier, if you're watching, we need item scaling in this game. Please and thank you. Uh, but until we get scaling, this is about as good as it's going to get. It does have some nice ambience, but like I said, you'll notice the candles provide practically no illumination. So I had to go through with floodlights uh, and kind of hide the floodlights around to be able to get the atmospheric effect that I wanted, but not necessarily be uh, overwhelmed by it. Here I'm building uh, the Phantom's Lair. I'm changing all of the lights so that I can try and get more of a bluish pallor. And I have the green lights subdued down under the water so as to make it seem more airy. And then I'm building the Phantom's famous organ, which I'm putting up on top of this little plinth here. They have an organ, which I am using, but here again, I just didn't really think that it fit because it's more like a hurdy-gurdy organ. So I went in and I customized my organ uh, by combining it with a piano, as you can see me doing right now. And I thought that the Munster uh, exhaust pipes actually work quite well as the organ pipes here for my pipe organ. So I'm just kind of putting the finishing touches on that. And here I'm diving into the candling. And oh, there's so much candling. Like, I, I have to say, Universal really went over the top with the candling for this movie. Uh, there are so many freaking candles. And like I said, you'll notice it doesn't illuminate hardly anything beyond that immediate area. Here I was trying to build like a cool kind of pillar thing. It didn't really work, but I was okay with the shape of the background anyway. Uh, so I just kind of left it in. And here I'm just leaving in some bits and bobs and some phantomish stuff. One thing that the Phantom is known for in The Phantom of the Opera is that all of the stuff in his lair is stuff that he's stolen from the opera. So I wanted to try to incorporate that in the form of statues and uh, cool pieces of art and so on. And again, over candling, but I took a bunch of the uh, wall mounted candelabras and just sunk them into the ground so that only the candle part is sticking up and spread them around all over the place so that I could get those candles. So let's take a ride on the Phantom.
here we go. So that was the Phantom Ride, and I'm actually very happy with how it turned out overall. Uh, zooming back up to the surface, we are going to go ahead and drop in our Haunted Mansion that we built. Uh, the Haunted Mansion is a functional piece of scenery in that it also contains a restroom, a uh, Looney Balloon store, and I want to say a uh, drink stand too, Gulpy Soda. So we're just going to try to position this. One thing that I ran into trouble with is this is a lot bigger than I was expecting. Uh, this is largely because I build things on a creative world. I don't build them in C2. I just find it's easier for me to build them in a, a separate building world and then import them in as a blueprint uh, rather than trying to zoom around and check their camera angles and everything um, on the actual site. So sometimes the size does get a little challenging. And after I hook up the paths, I just want to make sure everything's working. They're kind of clipping through the floor, but you know what? I'll take it. From a, different, uh, from a distance, nobody's going to know. Now, uh, since the last time I have gone through and I've actually built the uh, area up a little bit, I threw in some greenery, I threw in some trees, some benches, and I've been upping uh, the security, the vendors, and also the mechanics for this area now. Um, so the guests were complaining that they were thirsty, so they got a drink stand. They were complaining they need a bathroom, so I put one in on this end of the park. And uh, just in general, little minor improvements that way uh, that I think will really help out in the long run. I'm just going through and adding in some autumn trees now. Uh, something that you actually can do, and that is true to nature, not all the trees change color at the same time. So it's always nice, I think, to sprinkle in some green in amongst the autumn trees uh, so that you have some place for your eye to rest a little bit. And again, because this house was based on a real-life house from Louisiana, I'm going in and putting in some of these swamp trees with the Spanish moss and some wisteria on the side here, which is an absolutely gorgeous flower. Um, but I can tell you, as a southerner, it only blooms for about two weeks out of the year. Jumping to the other side, I was trying to think about a way to incorporate a live animal enclosure into the horror land. Uh, I have a couple other ideas as well as this, but I think next time what I'm going to do is I want to try to build a wolf enclosure. Uh, which will be themed for both the horror node and the mountain node connecting to it. So here's going to be the path in order to get there. The actual wolf enclosure, of course, will be built in Planet Zoo, which is actually quite exciting because this is the first animal enclosure that I will build for Planet Zoo. Um, and here I'm just putting in a sign to remind me of where it is going to be and uh, how to get there and so on. Then I figured in order to get down this way, we would need to have some more uh, lights. So I just copy and pasted them over. And uh, that's pretty much the walkway there. It is not actually a functional walkway in this game because it doesn't actually lead anywhere except to the just a memento that we had over by the uh, mystery shack. But it is thematically a good one. And uh, that's where we're going to wrap up for today. If you enjoyed today's episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And for more of the world of pure imagination, you can feel free to subscribe and also support us on Patreon. The link will be in the description. But until next time, I am the Popkin King, and I will see you next time.